Hey guys, I wanted to update you on my current handbag collection and it's perfect timing because I just checked to see when my last handbag video was posted or my last collection video was posted and it was exactly a year ago. It was September 2018. We're going to be talking about the very minimal collection that I have. It was already very minimal and I actually sold one bag from my last year's video. So I will talk about that, why I sold it, do I regret it? It's gonna be a really casual chat, so let's get right into it. We're not going in any particular order. We'll start off with this one right here. This is the Gucci Soho Disco. This is a crossbody bag that I really like and it's the only crossbody bag that I own. Well, technically, there's another bag coming up that is a crossbody, but I choose to wear it as a shoulder bag. This is the only one that I actually use as a traditional crossbody. I love this bag. It is a very simple uh, rectangle shape with not much going on inside. I just use this over the weekend and it's a very convenient bag. It's of course a very popular one. Gucci came out with other designs since then that are really popular and this is kind of on the back burner for a lot of people, but I still like it. I always wanna have that one neutral, probably black crossbody bag in my collection, so I don't really foresee myself selling this at any point. I did also have the rose beige or beige one back in the day, and I did sell that one. I was a little too cautious about getting color transfer on the back because this does rub up against jeans and uh, different clothing and it just worried me a little bit too much. I probably didn't need to but I just was thinking about it all the time when I would wear it so I ended up selling it and I kept the black one. It just shows how much I really like the design because I wanted to get it in another color, but the color just wasn't really working out for me. So I stuck with this one. It has the tassel here. It's a nice long crossbody bag. I am five foot three and it sits perfectly right below my hip. I also like to wear it like this sometimes if I wanna go a little bit more underseated and not show the logo. So I like having that option. I really like my Gucci Soho Disco and I definitely do recommend it. I'm gonna talk about this one next since I did reference that I have a bag that can be a crossbody but I choose to wear it as a shoulder bag and this is the Louis Vuitton Speedy B25 or the Speedy Bandolier. 25 in Demir Ben. I mentioned this or I showed this in my last video which was my Louis Vuitton Alma PM what's in my bag because I was transferring my items from this bag into my Alma PM. I love this bag. This is probably my most used bag at the moment. I just love the size of it. It's really convenient to wear as a top handle bag for more of like a lady-like approach. This is empty at the moment. I like to wear it as a shoulder bag like this, and this is how I typically wear it. And then you can wear it as a crossbody if you take this apart and then add that extension strap that it comes with, but I just choose to keep that in my box and I don't use it that often. I did use it one weekend when I knew I wanted it as a crossbody, but for me, it's a little bit too big and bulky for a crossbody. That's just my preference. I prefer to wear it like this as a shoulder bag and I think it's really convenient. I love the treated leather. It's very easy to uh, not think too much about it. It's very carefree and I know that I did get a request for a wear and tear so I will do another video that's more of a dedicated video where we can really talk about this bag in depth. I can show you guys um, what it looks like inside and everything but this is my favorite bag, it's the one that I was really wanting to get more than anything. I thought about this bag all the time and it took me a while to get it, but I finally did and it's definitely worth the hype. This is my most recommended or the one that I highly recommend the most out of all of the bags that I own. All the bags, I don't have that many bags. It's gonna go by really fast. And here is the Alma PM by Louis Vuitton. If you saw my last video, you are very familiar with this. If you are interested in seeing that, if you haven't already, I will put a card up here for you to check out. It is the what's in my bag video where I go more in depth with the organizer that I carry in here as well. And I will also put a link in the description box. This was a pre-loved bag. I uh, got it off of fashionfile.com. It was listed as excellent. It is 17 years old. It was made in 2002 in France and 
it still looks like nearly brand new. There were some scuffs right along the bottom that, that are kind of white um, and that's it. Otherwise, it looks so good. It comes with the gold or brass hardware, which is the reason why I went the pre-loved route since if you were to get it directly from Louis Vuitton, then it will be in the silver. So I love the epi leather. This is a black epi leather bag. You can get a strap to wear with an Alma PM. There are two um, D-rings right here. I guess they're called D-rings where you can put a crossbody or a, just a strap but I like to wear it as a top handle. I keep it open and it fits a lot. So again, check out that video if you wanna see more. It's really close to being my number one bag. It's just slightly behind the Speedy B25. Before I got the Speedy B25, this was my favorite bag. I absolutely love it. And it was in such amazing condition when I bought it, especially for how old it is. Even if it was made like three, four years ago, I would say, like, yeah, that makes sense. It's only three, four years old, but no, this is 17 years old. So in terms of luxury bags, those are the three that I own right now. And so you probably guessed which one I ended up selling if you watched my other collection video from a year ago. I'm gonna move on to this one. And this is a Kate Spade handbag. It's a top handle bag. And this one is really special to me because it's from my friend, Heather. She got it for me for Christmas this last year. It was so sweet of her when I opened up the bag, I was like, jaw drop, like, oh my gosh, like, why would you do that for me? Like, so that's so nice. But it does come with a strap as well that is in here, but I'm a big fan of the top handle look. I think it's just so ladylike and classy. Uh, so I just like to keep it like this, just a very classic looking bag. So thank you, Heather. I love it. And this is part of my little mini collection. And the last bag in my very small mini, but special to me handbag collection is the Longchamp Le Pliage ex expandable tote in, I believe, khaki. I believe that's what it is. It was a part of my Nordstrom anniversary sale haul from 2018. I mentioned it when I uh, did a video dedicated to that and I've been using this all the time. I've used it for travel. I used it on planes It goes directly under a seat perfectly. I've gotten questions about that It does fit under a seat even when it's expanded You can uh, zip it down and make it smaller than actually just the large regular Le Pliage But I tend to keep it expanded like this. I like to throw a bunch of crud in here and take it with me to work. Um, I don't actually bring it inside to work though. I just keep it in my car because I mentioned this in my last video, but I love to just have everything with me and I don't like not having something. So this is almost like my safety net when I go to work. I don't wanna necessarily bring everything inside with me to the newsroom, but I at least have it in my car if I need it. It's a very durable bag. Um, there is some staining here and there, but I don't mind it. I mean, I'm pretty sure if I really wanted to clean it, I probably could, but I love this color. I mean, it just goes with everything. It's so beautiful and neutral, and I've always been a big fan of Le Pliage bags. If you can find this, it is a good one to have, especially for travel. So now we're just gonna chat um, about some other stuff related to handbags. So the one bag that I did end up selling in this last year was the Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM in the Damier Ben print with rose ballerine interior. I did a video about this bag, I did a review, and I loved that bag, but I ended up selling it, and there's a part of me that kind of regrets it, but not really, so let me get into that. So the MM size. I love the MM size, uh, it's the medium. Uh, if you're not too familiar, there's a PM, an MM, and a GM. The MM size is the medium size, and it's a good day-to-day -day bag. I really loved it. I used it all the time for work. Uh, like I said, I enjoy having a lot of stuff with me, so it made sense. But there was a part of me that felt like it wasn't quite big enough to justify having a tote bag. Um, I think that I would really benefit from a GM size at some point. I thought about it for a while, and I ended up selling it. Um, the rose ballerine interior also was one of those things that I just kind of kept thinking about. It was a beautiful light pink color, but as you can imagine, it kind of 
makes you worry about the bag um, more than I feel like I should worry about a tote bag, you know? It actually wasn't that bad. Like when I did my review video, I'm pretty sure I didn't have a lot of scuffing in there. Like it looked pretty good. I was able to clean a lot of it, but there was still something in the back of my mind that made me worry about the light pink interior and I just don't want to worry about a bag like that. So it was like that size that I felt like could have been a little bit bigger for it to be perfect for me and then there was the light pink aspect of it and it just was not a perfect bag for me for what it was meant to do in my collection. So in my collection because it's so small I like each bag to serve a, a very good purpose. Like I have one crossbody bag I wanted to have, and when I'm talking about these bags, I'm talking about luxury bags. So I wanted just one crossbody bag that I know can be my go-to crossbody. I have the Alma PM that serves as like the perfect classic top handle bag. I have the Speedy B25, which can also be a classic top handle bag, but it really serves well for me as a shoulder bag. And then I wanted to have that perfect tote bag. And uh, I think for me, to have it be that perfect tote bag, it needed to be a little bit bigger. And so um, because of all those factors, I ended up selling it on a Tradesy, which is the app that I use, not sponsored, not affiliated or whatsoever. It's just the website or app that I found myself and I used it for quite a few bags actually and it's worked out well for me. So hopefully it went to a very loving home. Uh, but I did part ways with that bag. So I'm wondering if maybe I should have just kept that bag until I figured out what that replacement tote bag was gonna be. It's not a serious issue. I also have the Le Pliage bag. That's a great tote bag, so I don't need anything else. Um, but this is just me thinking about um, wanting to have another classic luxury tote bag and uh, figuring out what that is. I've just kind of been like back and forth on it. I think there's a part of me that like truly, truly wants it in monogram, the, the GM size, in monogram with the beige interior. Um, but I don't know. How do you guys feel about monogram print um, just like in life, at work, day to day? I think, you know, there's a part of me that's like, who cares? Just rock whatever you want to rock. I feel like if I was just kind of going about my life behind closed doors, then I would get the monogram print. But I don't know how I feel about it if I were to like use it every single day. I feel like eventually I'm just gonna say screw it, do whatever I want, you do you, I do I, and I should just go ahead and get the monogram print. It's probably gonna happen at some point, but I've just kind of been going back and forth in my head about that. Um, and then wondering if I should go with the Damier, Damier a Ben, Dab, wow, Damier a Ben print um, for the GM size. I've definitely watched so many review videos though. I mean, oh my gosh, I've watched so many. So it's not like I haven't heard what people have to say about every bag. And I also think, and I truly believe that you should get what you truly want to get and do it for yourself and not care about other people. Uh, so I think eventually I'm just going to go ahead and get the monogram in the GM size and call it a day. So that is it for now. I was going to combine this with a talk about SLGs, like small leather goods, but I thought maybe if I talked a little bit more about like what I sold and my regrets or what I want in the future, I think that would round out the discussion on handbags a little bit more and then I could do another video about SLGs. Either way, there are more of these types of videos coming. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did like this video, please let me know in the comments and also like the video. Um, I don't usually ask for that, but I'm kind of getting to a point where I'm like, you know what, I should probably ask to um, have you guys like videos every now and then because it really does help me out on YouTube. And I think that's it for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will talk to you guys again very soon. Bye.